Well, first of all, I'd like to thank MP for this uh, interview and, uh, and for being uh, uh, at this meeting. Uh, so at this uh, EHA, we have uh, several new uh, advancements uh, in the field also of EL amyloidosis. Uh, in particular, we have uh, two studies uh, interesting regarding the use of Belantamab mafodotin, that is a new drug that uh, we hope uh, it will become soon available also for EL amyloidosis patients. We have also retrospective studies uh, from uh, um, different centers, so one from Morocco, one from Tunisia and, uh, and one from India, that uh, really gave us a taste of real-life experiences in uh, the AL amyloidosis uh, field. Lastly, we have uh, the important data from the retrospective international court regarding the healthcare utilization uh, in Europe. This is part of uh, the um, international retrospective study that was presented also at ASH and uh, comprises more than 2,000 patients, so give really um, the clue regarding uh, this uh, disease in Europe. We have uh, data, uh, as mentioned, from two studies now. One, first of all, we had the first 11 patients from the EMN uh, study, the European Myeloma Network study. This is a prospective clinical trial that is running in Europe, and uh, we have in uh, the CHA only data of uh, 11 patients. So obviously we can't conclude um, about um, safety, but uh, from the first safety run-in, there, are, there were no uh, important safety issues. And so the study moved on, and uh, in terms of um, uh, the ocular uh, problems, we learn from the studies from multiple myeloma that is fundamental to have connections with ophthalmologists. And in the AL amyloidosis field, we know that it is important to have connection with all the specialists. The collaborations with, uh, with the cardiologists, nephrologists is fundamental. And now also with uh, ophthalmologists is important to, first of all, choose the right patients and then to see the presence of possible uh, abnormalities related to the drug. There are, in, in the phase two study, um, one patient with a grade two and one of grade four. And also, in the second important study presented here at EHA, that is a retrospective court from the London group, there are uh, refer patients with uh, uh, ocular toxicity. However, in all cases, this was uh, not permanent and uh, only uh, was related to a uh, delay in the upcoming treatment. So we really hope that also this uh, toxicity is uh, in the range of what is expected and what is, was already seen in multiple myeloma patients, so it could be considered manageable. We have uh, now daratumumab that uh, is an the first approved drug for AL amyloidosis. But uh, also at this meeting we had two studies uh, that are uh, reporting the use of daratumumab in stage 3 patients. So, though in particular one there are the data from again an European Maloma Network study about the use of single agent daratumumab in uh, stage 3b patients. Those patients are expected to not be eligible for the use of Daratuma because uh, Daratuma is approved only for stage 2 and 3A patients. So, uh, first of all, we hope that this drug will become available soon also for advanced patients, for patients with advanced disease. But obviously we have to wait the results of this study. And secondly, we have um, under investigation new treatment options. For example, we uh, are uh, running also in Italy, where I work, but also in many other countries, a couple of important studies uh, about the use of KL-101. That is an antibody against the amyloid fibrils. 
This is a completely new approach that will combine with chemotherapy and we really look forward to have the data about this uh, uh, drug in order to see if this is associated with an improvement in uh, overall survival for our patients. Importantly, both the studies are for patients in stage 3, so with advanced disease. One study in patients with stage 3A and one in patients in stage 3B, so the really advanced disease. Another important clinical trial that is underway is regarding the use of Birtamimab, that was the so-called NeoD001. We know the history about this drug that, uh, and the history of the vital and pronto clinical trials that were stopped. And, but a subsequent analysis, post-hoc analysis, showed possible efficacy in Mayo stage 4 patients, so really advanced patients. So this drug, clinical trial will look into the activity of this drug in this situation, in this patient population. Lastly, we have also other combination uh, of the use of daratumumab. For example, in Italy we are running a trial about the use of daratumumab and pomalidomide that was never studied before. And so we will see if this combination will become available for our patients. Well, it's probably too early to answer to this question, so I really hope to meet again and be here and discuss about that in the upcoming meetings. Because unfortunately we do not have data except for a clinical case reported by the Barcelona group. Our friends from Barcelona use a CAR T-cell approach in a patient affected by refractory multiple myeloma and renal AL amyloidosis. She obtained a good, really good hematologic response and no safety uh, issues were, were uh, noticed. Obviously, it's a single case, but it took us to think the possibility of using in highly selected patient population also this approach. Obviously, we need clinical trials, we need collaborations with pharma, but also we, have, we need international collaboration in order to test this uh, approach. In, and uh, I can say probably we have to focus in, uh, and to be careful for uh, patients with cardiac amyloidosis, obviously. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to share? Yes, I would like to share that um, in, uh, in a couple of months we will have the International Society of Amyloidosis meeting held in Heidelberg. And so I really hope to meet uh, my loma patient in Europe and also uh, all the researchers, uh, experts in the field. Because at this meeting we will have five days focus on all kinds of systemic and localized amyloidosis and uh, we will discuss uh, uh, all the new uh, treatment options, but also basic and translational research. So it will be really a pleasure to meet again you soon.